In this lecture, we're going to introduce what I think is a really interesting concept. Uh, it's called span. And uh, so first, I'd actually just like to recall an example from the previous lecture. Um, so it's just an example from last time. I'd just like to review a few of the main ideas um, from the last lecture, um, because we're going to be using them constantly throughout this one. So uh, the, here's a problem that we did. Um, not if, um, is, is uh, this vector, I think it was 3, 2, 0, is 3, 2, 0 a linear combination? of, and we had two other vectors, um, 1, 0, 2, and uh, 1, negative 1, 4, comma. Okay, so is this vector a linear combination of the other vectors? Um, what does that mean? Well, it means um, are there x0 and x1, or sorry, x1 and x2, such that you know, x1 times this vector plus x2 times the second one. x1 and x2 are scalars. Um, is there a way, a way to make that equal to this vector? Right. And recall also we had a, another notation for that. So here's another notation. Not a new concept, just a new notation. Net notation is a matrix um, 1, 0, 2, 1, negative 1, 4 times a vector. So that's our new notation. All this means is take the linear combination of these two vectors, the columns of the matrix, w with these two scalars. All right, so it means exactly the same thing as, as this. And right, we want that to equal 3, 2, 0. Um, how do we solve this problem? Do you remember? So what we did is we, we, we just actually expanded this out. We, we multiplied through the scalars and then added these two vectors and we get linear equations. We get x1 plus x2 equals 3 if I just look at the first components. And then we get minus x2 equals uh, 2. And then we get 2x2 or 2x1 plus 4x2 equals 0 if I look at the third components. Okay. And that corresponds to this matrix. This augmented uh, matrix. All right, let's look at my red uh, pen. Uh, 3, 2, 0. Great. Um, and we know how to solve, uh, how to solve systems uh, using the augmented matrix. We you know, use Gaussian elimination. I think what we found last time is this turned out to be inconsistent. It's not obvious looking at it, but um, to this, this system turned out to be, be inconsistent. And so because it's inconsistent, what does that mean? That means we have no solution, right? So, so th this equation has no solution, this vector equation, which means this is not a linear combination of these two vectors, okay? And so here's a new question. Well, if this one is not a linear combination, how can we tell? And you know what? What are all the vectors that are linear combinations of, let's say, these two given vectors? So which vectors are uh, linear combinations? Can we maybe describe them all? Of uh, let's give these names. We'll use these uh, for for a bit. So we'll call this one U one. And this one, U2. Okay. Um, let's translate this into our, uh, our new language here. So, um, IE for which, um, so now I don't have 3, 2, 0. I have maybe, uh, b1, b2, b3. So these are just any real numbers. So for which real numbers b1, b, b2, and b3 does this matrix equation have a solution? So again, 
Um, I'm just taking linear combinations of the columns with coefficients x1 and x2. Okay. Equaling, and I want this to equal, and this, this time, b1, b2, b3. Okay. So does this have a solution? Uh, sorry. Okay, well, how do we solve this kind of problem? Okay, we need to find all the vectors, b1, b2, and b3. We want to sort of understand what shape these vectors uh, make in, in three-dimensional space. Well, uh, if you notice something here, this augmented matrix here, it, the left part of it is just the same as this matrix here, right? That's no accident. And this part of the augmented matrix, this column here, is just the same as this vector here. Okay, so really, an augmented matrix, I think now we understand what an augmented matrix really is. It's standing in for this equation, this matrix equation. Okay, matrix times a vector equals a vector. Okay, so what, what augmented matrix is this corresponding to? Well, this will correspond to, um, this corresponds to the following. So my augmented matrix is going to be 1, 1, and then B1, and then 0, negative 1, B2, and then 2, 4, B3. Okay. Uh, we would like, yeah, what would we like here? We want to figure out which vectors are linear combinations of this. So we want this system to have a solution. Okay, so in other words, we want this to be consistent right we we want this to be consistent let's uh let's do some real reducing so um i'm going the second row looks good right let's take the third row and subtract two copies of the first row uh now i need to do that with this side too right so i have b3 minus 2b1 here and then b2 b1 great okay and finally, these first two rows look good. Let's uh, take the, sec uh, the third row and we'll add two copies of the second row. Okay, so I got zero, uh, B1, B, yeah, B1, B2. What, what is this gonna become? B3 minus two B1 plus two B2, right? Okay. Um, are we in echelon form now? Notice we weren't in echelon form here, right? Because we had a, um, we had this two below the negative one, but now we're in echelon form. And let's look at this last row here. What are we looking for? We want, we want to know when is this consistent, right? Or when is it, um, yeah. Or yeah, when is it consistent? When is it inconsistent? Well, it's inconsistent if we have a row that looks like zero, zero, something non-zero here. Okay, so this is actually, this is uh, consistent, this system, um, exactly when, when what? Um, this thing equals zero. Let me put it in order. So I have the B1 and then the 2B2 two, two two plus B3 equals zero. Okay. Great. Um, and if it doesn't equal zero, right? You know, and B1, B2, and B3 are just these given numbers. So otherwise, there, well, what can we say? There is no solution, right? It's inconsistent. Okay. Um, what is this right here? This is, this is the equation what kind of object is this? It's the equation for a plane, right? In you know, three-dimensional space, right? B1, B2, B3 is a vector. We want to know for what vectors does this have a solution? It turns out to be all the vectors that satisfy this algebraic relationship, which describes a plane, okay? Um, so there's a very beautiful picture um, going on here. So, so let's say I have um, I'm in three-dimensional space, so kind of draw like a 
it's my coordinate axes. Let's say uh, this is my um, u1. Okay, and and this is my u2. Let's say it goes up this way. Um, okay. Can we see what the plane is going to look like? All the vectors are linear combinations of these two. Well, let's think uh, geometrically. So we can we can just add. Um, we can add any copies of these vectors together, or we can scale them, right? So we can go as far as we want in this direction. We can go as far as we want in this direction. We can go into this direction a little bit and then go in this direction, right? So, so here's what we sort of end up with. Or we can go back this way, right? You can take negative scalars. Um, we're in three-dimensional space, but you, you see what we're getting is a, a plane, we have two vectors in three-dimensional space. They're not pointing in the same direction. We get a plane. And this plane here is the same one described by this equation. Right? So we have an algebraic way of thinking about it by doing this uh, calculation and a geometric way of thinking about it. Um, okay, what is the picture here? Okay, we had a vector that turned out to not be a linear combination of u1 and u2. Well, in this picture, that might look like this. So maybe that vector is pointing down here off the plane, okay? So maybe it's this point here. It does not lie on this plane, it lies somewhere else. It's not a linear combination of these two vectors. Okay, um, time to define what we mean by span. So um, here's the definition. Um, the span of a set of vectors. Now let's give names to the vectors. Uh, v1, v2, we can have any number of vectors. Um, yeah, and let's go up to vm. So we have m vectors, but they're in Rn. Okay, so we have n components, but the number of vectors doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the number of you know, components, right, the dimension we're in. So I'm calling them different uh, letters. Uh, so what is the span of a set of vectors? Uh, it is the set of all the linear combinations. It's an infinite set, uh, generally, right? So all linear combinations. Of the, of the vectors. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try to write this in like really mathematical notation. Um, so that is. But by, by the way, it's, it's it's often denoted just by the word span. So span of span parentheses, and then you put your vectors here. So v1, v2, vm. What is it defined to be? It's defined to be the set of all things that look like this. C1, V1, linear combinations, C2, V2, all the way up to uh, Cm, Vm. Okay, where the C, all the Cis are in, are, are in R, right? They're real numbers, the scalars. We take, we take any scalars, right? So yeah, again, this is going to be a huge set in generally. It, cer it certainly is in this problem here, right? Any point in this plane is going to be in the span of u1 and u2, okay? Um, we would say in this example, right, 3, 2, 0 is not in the span of 1, 0, 2, and 1, negative 1, 4. Let me write that in really mathematical notation. So... Here's, a, yeah, here's an example that we already did uh, last time even, but what we showed is that 3, 2, 0 is, uh, remember our symbol for is an element of? That was this, right? So here's a symbol for not is, an, is not an element of. You just cross it out. <laughs> so 3, 2, 0 is not an element of the set span. Um, of 1, 0, 2, and 1, negative 1, 4, okay, for example. 
Um, okay, there's actually another way that we use the word span, and that says a verb. So we can say that a set of vectors spans a space. Uh, so so we, we also say, here it's sort of a noun, right? It's a span of a set of vectors. We can also say that a set of vectors um, v1, v2, dot, 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 uh, vm, and rn. We say that this set spans as a verb rn if, what do you think that would, that would mean? If the set of vectors spans the space rn. Well, uh, it should mean that you can get to any point in rn just by taking linear combinations of these vectors. So in other words, if we, if we use the definition we already made, right, this is the set of all linear combinations. So, so what we're, we're really saying is that the span of these vectors, span is a noun here, the span of these vectors should be the entire space. Okay. Uh, sorry, n, yeah, R n. Uh, great. Okay. So let, let's see some examples of this. This is one of these concepts where, um, you really have to work through a lot of examples to get the hang of it. Um, so here's the first example. This is one of the simpler examples I can think of. So the vectors, um, let's take the vectors one, zero. What space are we in now? Well, we're in R2, right? So our vectors apparently have two components. So the vectors one, zero and zero, one, uh, they span R2. Can we prove that? Let's try to prove that. So they span R2 because what do we have to show? We have to show that we can write actually any vector in R2, any vector in R2, as a linear combination of these two. So here's what I need to find. I need to find some coefficient times that one. Um, yeah, I need to put something there plus some coefficient times this one, okay, in order to get A, B. Well, uh, you can probably see what that's going to be, right? I can put, uh, my coefficient could be A uh, times that one, and then B times this one. Yeah, when you add these two vectors, you get the vector AB, which means, yes, these two vectors do span R2. We just proved it, okay? Um, okay, this is, this is just a follow-up example, kind of the same example, but uh, do um, one, zero, 0, 1, and let's add another one. Do um, do these three vectors span? Um, uh, actually, first of all, what if I said, do these vectors span R3? Well, you'd tell me that that question doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> because these vectors live in R2, right? Don't get fooled by the fact that we have three vectors, right? These vectors have two components, so we're in two-dimensional space. So do they span R3? That would, that would, that's a nonsensical question, right? So, but I can ask, do these vectors span R2, right? And the answer is yes. Um, why is it yes? Because these two alone, these vectors alone span R2. So if I add an additional vector, okay, then I can get at least everything I, can get, I could already get with these vectors and possibly even more, uh, but I can already get everything actually with these two vectors. And so uh, this doesn't change anything in this case. Right? So the answer is yes. Um, let's do a, uh, a weirder example. Oh, by the way, so notice, you know, why is it so obvious that it's yes? Um, I, I could have written here, you know, plus uh, zero times two negative one. I don't even need to use that third one. That's fine. I can have zero as a scalar, right? And then this linear combination works. 
Um, okay, uh, let's do a more interesting one. I'm sure you will agree that this next one is more interesting. Uh, so do one zero and um, not zero one, but let's do one one. Do these span R2? Hmm. This has a fun geometrical interpretation, actually, um, which is, let's draw a little grid here. Um, let's look at, yeah, what are the vectors 1, 0, that, that, that looks like this, and 1, 1, that looks like this, right? So essentially what, what I'm asking here is, um, you know, can, can I get... Can I add any multiple of this one, any multiple of that one, and can I get to any point in the plane? So can I get to any point in the plane by um, by moving, uh, sorry, by moving only, what directions am I going? I'm allowed to go east or west, right? I can multiply this one by a a negative scalar. So by going only east and west and um, northeast or southwest, right? That's northeast and southwest. So can I just move in those four directions and reach any point in a plane? Um, yeah, you can, you can probably convince yourself that yes, that should be true, right? Um, can we prove this mathematically? Um, so what's what's the alternative? Uh, what's an alternative way to phrase this question? Well, is there a linear combination of these two vectors that can get me to any point that I want? So, i.e., can I take um, you know x copies of the first one and or x one copies of the first one and x two copies of the second one and get any point I want? So, i.e., does this matrix equation have a solution for all A and B, right? Hmm. Well, what do you think? So, um, so let, let's do this uh, the way that we know how to do it, uh, which is... Um, Oh, well, it's the only way, basically. You, <laughs> you write the augmented matrix. Remember, the augmented matrix, from this form, it's easy to see what the augmented matrix is. You don't have to rewrite this a bunch of times uh, before uh, get, you know get the system of equations and get the augmented matrix. It's just going to be 1, 0, 1, 1 to the right of the um, red line. And then A, B, right? Not X1, X2. Those don't factor into the matrix at all, right? Remember, the whole point of the augmented matrix is we're trying to sort of leave out the, the variables. Um, but yeah, this side becomes this column here. Does this have a solution for all A and B? Um, what do you think? What if you saw this augmented matrix? Does this have a solution? No matter what A and B are. Uh, well, when is it not going to have a solution? It's not going to have a solution when we have a row that looks like all zeros here and then something non-zero here. But that can never happen here, right? We have two pivots. We have a pivot in each row, okay, on this side of the, the red line. So, yes, this is, this is always going to have a solution. It doesn't matter what you put in for A and B, right? So, yes. Um, so, it's always, this is always consistent. No matter what, um, no matter what A and B are. Um, so that's pretty cool. So, 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 what does that mean? So, these vectors, if we rephrase it in terms of the original question, so one zero and one one span. R2, 2, uh, span R2. 
Okay. Uh, well, maybe any two vectors spin R2. What do you think? <laughs> Actually, yeah, let me give that to you as a problem. So here's a problem. Can you think of uh, two vectors that don't spin R2? Okay, take a moment to think about that, and then I'll, I'll give you uh, my answer. Okay, so first of all, um, yes, it is possible to think of vectors that don't span R2. Um, here's one example. There are other examples, but um, let's take the vector, um, let's take this vector. So this is uh, 2, 1. Then I'll take uh, double that. Okay, four, two. Those are my two vectors. Uh, these do not span R2. Why is that? Well, uh, what does span mean again? It means all the linear combinations of these. But you see, if I add one of these, if I add two, one to four, two, for example, I, I just get something else along the same line. Right, so I, I'm just getting I'm just getting other vectors along this this line, All right? I can take scalar multiples. I can take a negative scalar multiple if I want, end up over here. But still, yeah, I, I always just end up on this uh, this blue line here. Okay. Um, so there are two vectors that do not spin R two. So if you pick two random vectors, um, you're not guaranteed uh, to have them spin R two. Okay, they might be pointing in the same direction. Um, Ah, they could both be the zero vector also, right? The zero vector doesn't really span anything other than itself. Um, if it's just the span of the zero vector. Um, but yes, here's an example where they span a oh, one dimensional space. Okay. Um, let's go to R3 now. So let's, uh, let's look at vectors in R3. So hopefully you're getting a good idea of this, uh, how this concept works. Um, so let's yeah take it up one dimension. So I'll give you an example in R three. Um, do the vectors one one zero zero one one and um, two one zero. Do these three vectors span R three? And again, I, I want to stress this is um, this is not obvious uh, just by looking at it. Right? So first, um, first we should change this into a matrix problem. So, you know, what, what's the alternative uh, way of phrasing this problem? I.e., does one one zero zero uh, one one two one zero times uh, let's see I have three columns right so I'm going to take x of the first one or x1 of the first one x2 of the second one x3 of the third one and can I get any vector I want so can I get can I get any vector I want so let me give names to these actually um, this vector here with all the x's, I'm going to call uh, just a vector x. Okay, so that'll, that'll keep track of my variables, which are which are really scalars, right? When we're thinking about it this way. Um, this one I'll just call vector b. And I'll call this matrix A. Okay, usually use capital letters to refer to matrices. Okay, so does a times matrix a times column vector x equal column vector B. Does this have a solution? A solution. Um, what should I write next? Does it have a solution for every B? Right? For every vector B in R3. Okay, right, that's what it means for three vectors to span R3. 
right? I need to be able to write any vector as a linear combination of these three vectors, okay? Well, um, I think we know what to do, right? So let's convert this to an augmented matrix and uh, try to get that matrix into echelon form. On this side, I'm going to have B1, B2, B3. Okay. Um, first row is going to stay the same. I'm going to subtract the first row from the second. It's B2 minus B1 now. Um, okay, I'll just rewrite the third row for now. And then we have one more step, I think. I'm going to subtract the second row from the third. Okay. Again, you see I end up with some complicated expression down here. So I have B3 minus the second row, right? So minus B2 plus B1, I guess. And B2 minus B1, B1. Okay. Um, is this matrix going to have a solution for every, you know, just imagine, you've got to imagine that these can be any real numbers. Okay. And we're saying no matter what real numbers we put in there, no matter what number we end up here, what we end up with here, is this going to have a solution? The answer is yes, right? Because see, we have this pivot down here. So there's no danger in this being inconsistent. This will be all. This will always be consistent because of this one right there. That one is indicating it's always consistent. Okay. So we will always have a solution um, to this to this equation, no matter what b is. Which means yes, these span these three vectors span R three. Um, what would the picture be here? So, um, can I give these names again? So this is U1, U2, U3. And I have, um, so first of all, here, let's draw two vectors. And these, so let's say this is U1 and U2. These on their own span a plane, right? Because they're pointing in different directions. You can see that, right? U1, U2 is not just a scalar multiple of U1. Okay, so these span a plane just on their own. But I'm also allowed to add some multiple of U3. U3, it turns out, is you know pointing in a different direction. So U3. If it were relying on this same plane, then these would not be spanning R3. But we just showed that they do span R3. So U3 is actually pointing, this is a geometric picture, it's pointing in a different direction. And um, the, one really beautiful way to visualize this is you can think of taking this whole plane and shifting it up along U3. And that allows you to actually access every point in three-dimensional space. So I'll kind of draw what I mean. Like you can kind of shift up that whole plane you can use use this vector u3 to shift up the whole plane. So let's say you can can shift the plane spanned by uh, spanned by uh, u1 and u2. Um, along u3. Um, to, you know, access any point in R3. Okay, so that's the geometric picture. These really do. You can take any multiple that, you can take a multiple of that one, a multiple of that one, a multiple of that one. If you choose the right multiples, you can get to any point, uh, any point you want in R3. Um, okay, let's do a Another example in three-dimensional space. I'm just going to take the same example. 
but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make this inconsistent. Okay, so the first two vectors I'm going to keep the same. So 1, 1, 0, uh, 0, 1, 1, and then what was this one? It was 2, 1, 0, and uh, let me think. I think I want to make it a 2, 1, negative 1. Okay. Do these vectors span R3? Okay, um, we're getting uh, we're getting faster at this, so let me just immediately write down the kind of try to be really confident and immediately write down the augmented matrix. <laughs> okay, so we want to know does this augmented matrix and, and remember I'm trying to get to any vector b1, b2, b3. Does this augmented matrix, you know, the system corresponding to this augmented matrix, always have a solution for any b1, b2, and b3? Well, uh, what happens when we try to get this real on form? Um, okay, let, let's just try to copy our work here. So um, these first two rows are going to look like this. 0, 1, negative 1. We'll have B1, B2 minus B1. But then the third row, you see that, that 0 is going to be a negative 1. And so when I subtract the second row, that's going to become a 0. So I'm going to get 0, 0, 0. And um, you know what? I actually don't care what I what I get here. So uh, I'm just going to put a dot there. So I don't, I don't really care. Uh, all, all I care is that some linear expression of the B, the B1, B2, and B3, right? Okay, if you really want to know, it's exactly this expression here. But it's just some expression, linear expression of B1, B2, and B3. Uh, sorry, that... Um, not really blurry. Let me write that again. B1, B2, and B3. Okay. Um, what do I need? I need this to always have a solution. Always, right? For any B1, B2, and B3. We can just write it as, you know, Vector b, right? Vector b just means, in this case, b1, b2, b3. Okay, I need I need to have a solution for any vector in R3. Will this always have a solution? Can you think of a case where this will not always have a solution? Well, I mean, sometimes we'll get lucky, and this will have a solution, right? So if this expression here. If we pick the right b1, b2, and b3, so that this equals zero, then we're fine, right? It's not; it does not look inconsistent, right? We'll have infinitely many solutions, in fact, which is okay. Um, but I need this to always have a solution, um, uh, which is not the case, right? But this is not con the case. And that's because this matrix is. Uh, so um, I'll say um, this vector b can be chosen so that uh, the matrix is inconsistent. Uh, inconsistent. Right? And, and do you see what the problem is here? It's, it's this, this last row. You see, we didn't have a pivot um, in, in, one, in one of the, these, these three entries, right? We had all zeros to the left of the red line. And that's just begging for, you know, uh, the system to be inconsistent. If we get anything non-zero there, it's going to be inconsistent, okay? So there's no hope that I will always have a solution, um, right? I could choose B1 and B2 and B3 so that this expression is not zero. And I'll get 0, 0, 0, 5, for example, right? Um, so in this case, the vectors do not span, um, R3. Okay. Um, oh, first of all, yeah, what's the picture here? So let me draw my U1 and U2 again. 
and you know, let's say let's just consider the first uh, ve the vector to sort of two at a time. Okay, so we get we can go this way too, right? Um, but these two are going to span a plane in three dimensional space. Remember, we're in three dimensional space. Um, what about the third vector, right? It turns out, right? So if I put the third vector, if it's if it's not lying on the same plane, if it's pointing somewhere else, can't we just use the same argument, right? This geometric argument and slide this plane along the direction of the third vector and get to every point? Well, sure, right? So so it actually means that our third vector had to be lying on the plane, on the same plane. Okay, it wasn't describing anything new. This third vector actually turned out to be in the span of the first two. Okay, so um, the third vector, so so u three lies in the plane in this problem, spanned by u one and u two. Can we actually see that the third vector, this u three, is in the span of? Let me label them again. Can we see that it's in the span of u two and u one? Can we write this third one as a linear combination of the first two? I think u three is going to be. Um, I think we want two of u one, right, to get this. This two there, and we have two two zero. And if I ah, if I subtract a u two. I think I get, I get U3. So you should check that. But, um, but yeah, essentially this is the geometrical picture here, right? These three vectors do not span all of our three. Turns out they span a plane, right? Um, in in three dimensional space, we're still in three dimensional space, but these span a two dimensional space within three dimensional space. Um, okay, let's try to summarize what we learned from these examples. Okay. Um, what did we learn? We learned that questions like this, do vectors span a space, really come down to something about this matrix here, right? And it, it actually didn't even turn out to involve the, the, um, the, this part of the, the, the augmented matrix. It just, it just involved this part here. Okay. So let's try to, let's try to make a general statement about that. Um, so, um, yeah, so the following, I'm just going to say the same thing in multiple ways. Um, so the following statements are equivalent. What does that mean? This is a phrase that's often used in math. Um, the following statements are equivalent. That means they're either all true at the same time or all false. Okay, so if one of them is true, all of them are true. Uh, first statement. The vectors, uh, let's use u, u1, u2, up to um, span, as a verb, rn. Okay, so let's say I have some vectors that span rn. What does that mean? Well, it means that u1 uh, times you know, some coefficient x1 plus x2 u2 all the way up to xm um equals b has a solution for every b. It has a solution for every B in Rn. Any vector in Rn, I should be able to write as a linear combination of these. That's just what it means to span. All right, so we're not saying anything profound yet. Um, third way of saying this, again, I'm not going to say anything profound. I'm just going to rewrite the second way. Um, the fourth one is going to be more profound, I promise. <laughs> um, this matrix, uh, where I just put the columns in, so u1, u2, uh, so sorry, yeah, the columns are my vectors times x1, x2, up to xm equals b. 
This matrix equation, again, yeah, has a solution for every B and R N. Ah, but when is this going to have a solution for every B and R N? This is this is sort of the more profound part. <laughs> um, what was our barrier to having a solution? It was when we had a row of all zeros in this, uh, when we got this matrix to its, um, you know, let's, let's call this matrix A, okay? So this matrix A is the one where you take our vectors and put them into columns, okay? This is A, X equals B, right? Um, okay, uh, we do not want rows of all zeros like this in our matrix A when we get it into echelon form because that makes it possible that we can choose this vector of B and end up with an inconsistent system. Okay, let's just go back one page and look at this other example. Um, sorry, it was, up, it was up here actually. Um, here, that one there made it so that this will always be consistent, right? We can never have all zeros here and then something non-zero there because we have a pivot. So what do we want? We want um, a pivot in every row of this matrix A. So, so that's a really cool part of the statement. So, um, and, and it turns out to be very useful too. So, so the, uh, well, not the matrix A, but the, the row echelon form, right? Of A um, has a pivot. I'm, I'm even ignoring this part, right? So I'm just saying, take the row echelon form of this part. I don't really care what's going on over here with all the, the BIs. Uh, but the row echelon form of A has a pivot in every row, okay? Okay, um, so these are all, in a sense, the same statement, okay? Um, let's practice applying this, okay? So, so yeah, let's practice. applying this. This is something we could really call like a theorem, a mathematical theorem. Okay. Um, okay, but not a paper, so here's another page. Um, okay, so here's a very general question. Um, let's suppose I have two numbers, M and N, and um, M is less than N. Okay, so if M is less than N, can M vectors, is it, is it even possible for M vectors to span Rn, okay? And, and these vectors, are in, well, what space are they in? If they're spinning Rn, they'd better be in Rn, right? So is it possible for M of vectors in Rn to span Rn? So some number of vectors that's less in the dimension of the space. Okay. Um, for example, could two vectors span R3? Could two vectors span three-dimensional space? When our first problem um, we had two vectors and it turned out they, they did not, uh, they did not span three dimensional space. We found a vector that's not in the span. Um, but maybe if we picked two different vectors, they would span R3. Um, your intuition should actually tell you that this is unlikely, right? Because two vectors, if they're pointing in different directions, it seems that they would span a plane, um, not all of R3. Um, so yeah, in R R three at least, your intu intuition should tell you this is you know, this is not possible. But what about in other dimensions, right? If m is three and n is five, can three vectors span R five? Um, the answer again turns out to be no. But much harder to argue uh, that uh, geometrically at least. But here's going to be our tool. This is our tool right here. This term. Okay, we're going to translate this question into this question. 
okay? So for these vectors to span Rn, it would mean that the rho echelon form of the matrix formed by it was putting the vectors u1 to um in the columns, that matrix has to have a pivot in every row. Okay, when we go to row echelon form. What's that matrix going to look like? Um, let me draw a matrix here. Draw a big matrix. Um, something like this, maybe. Okay, so what's in this first column? It's going to be u1, right? And then u2. Here's my u1 vector. Here's my u2 vector. And I have some number of rows. I end up with my um vector. Okay. So how many columns do I have? I have m columns, but I have n rows because these have n components. And so this dimension of the matrix is n. And n is bigger than m, so it really is like I drew it here. It's a little bit larger this way, or maybe a lot larger this way, right? Um, can this matrix, when I put it into row echelon form, can it have a pivot in every row? Well, no, it's not possible. There's just not enough space, right? Because what is it going to look like? I'm going to have a pivot here, maybe, and maybe a pivot here, and then maybe the pivots have to occur strictly to the right of the, the one above, right? So may maybe I have one over, over here, but, you know, the worst case scenario is I just have pivots that go down like this, right? So this is worst case scenario for the pivots, okay? And then this will be row M where my pivots end. I mean, maybe the pivots actually end up here, right? Um, but this is the worst case. This is as far down as I can extend um, the pivots. And then I would have rows of all zeros down here. Sorry, these are not zeros. These are the pivots. <laughs> yeah, I'll put like a star in them. <laughs> these are the pivots. Um, but I'll have rows of all zeros down here once the pivots end. And we know the pivots will end at some point because n is bigger than m. Okay, so this matrix cannot have, this, uh, this, this matrix A cannot have a pivot in every row if m is less than n. Okay, what does that mean? It means that, you know, again, using this equivalence, this does not have a pivot in every row. Well, this statement's false. This statement has to be false, right? These vectors do not span Rn. Okay, so M vectors cannot span Rn if M is less than N, if M is strictly less than M. Um, so what does that tell us? It actually tells us, so we, we actually need at least n vectors uh, to, you know, have any hope, let's say, um, of spanning Rn. Okay. Um, okay, this was a bit of an elaborate argument, right? Um, but it's a really nice argument, and it just uses, yeah, it uses, again, this, this equivalence. Okay, so we can always turn a problem about vectors spanning a space into looking at the row echelon form of a matrix. Very beautiful. Um, let's, let's do one other question. So what's the natural follow-up to this? What if I have, um, what if I do have enough vectors, uh, so to speak? So what if m is greater or equal to n? Well, then our m vectors guaranteed. So I certainly need at least um, n vectors. Let's say I have, yeah, at least n vectors. Are those guaranteed to span Rn? What do you think? Well, uh, no, there's certainly no guarantee. Um, 
because, um, well, well, first of all, it, you know, it's often helpful when you're trying to decide statements like this. Um, think about extreme cases. What's a really extreme case? They could all be zero. They could all be the zero vector. Okay. So I'll just say, this is, this is a good strategy for, for dealing with questions like this. So it's useful to consider you know, extreme cases when you're trying to decide if a statement is true or false. Okay. So we know this statement is false. Um, but uh, let's think about the matrix. So what would the matrix look like in this case? This matrix A, where we have the vectors as the columns. Well, this time the vectors have, uh, th there are more vectors than there are components in each vector, right? So this, so this is sort of the opposite picture where I have a, a thin, a long thin matrix like this. Okay. Um, so can I make, this is a question, can I make this matrix not have a pivot in every row? Sure, right? This matrix could have a row of all zeros. Okay. So there could, it could be a row of all zeros, okay? So even if you have a lot of vectors, even if the number of vectors is much larger than the dimension of the space, you have to be careful, they might not span the space, right? They might all be lying on the same line. They might all be the zero vector. Um, but what is this saying? It's saying if we want any hope of spanning the space Rn, we need at least n vectors, okay? Okay, so I think that's a good spot to end. Thanks for watching.